I hope the screen is visible to all. So it is a great pleasure and a moment of pride for me to introduce our resource person of the day, Dr. Suzanne Markham Bagnera. She is the director of the Hospitality Institute at Indian River State College, Florida, USA. A certified hotel administrator, Suzanne has over 25 years of hospitality experience, having held positions as general manager at Holiday Inn Hotel and Suites, Straybridge Suites, and Holiday Inn Express. Suzanne earned her MBA and BS from Johnson and Wales University and her doctorate from Iowa State University in hospitality management. An eminent researcher as well as author of books on hospitality management and tourism management as well as human resources. She also serves as a peer reviewer for the Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Technology. She is also a member of International Council of Hotel, Restaurant and Institutional Education. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Suzanne Begnera on board. So as we move further, Suzanne, I, uh, doc, uh, I have just prepared a small video kind of a gesture that I grabbed out from the various social media handles that you've been operating. I hope you will like that particular thing. It's exciting. <clears throat> Before we move further, and that was a small introductory gesture from the School of Hospitality Management for you, Suzanne. I hope you like that particular thing. Yes, thank you. That was so fun. I feel like I've had lots of different hairstyles and you've captured <laughs> all of my professional headshots. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> the pleasure is all ours. Thank you so much. And the next step is we will be visualizing the School of Hospitality Management IMS Unison University, what the school has to offer to the budding hoteliers and why it is more of a turning point in terms of career for the new generation. Please have a visual of it.
So that was a glimpse of the various activities that the School of Hospitality Management performed here back in the IMS Unison University. So we have the art of infrastructure, the well-experienced, internationally exposed faculty to nurture the dreams of the hospitality aspirants. So this is basically the team of the School of Hospitality Management led by Professor Dr. Vinerana, the Dean of the School of Hospitality Management. While I was uh, moving and searching for information for you, Suzanne, so I just came across two peculiar things that were there in majority of your pictures. So that made me more curious even to ask you before this formal rendezvous we begin around. So I have some two curious questions apart from the topic. I hope you won't mind answering them. Sure. The first one is the secret of pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere I'm watching you, the pineapples are there with you. I scrolled one of your video also, one of your close friend, Anthony, he was also speaking about the pineapples story. So what is the secret of the pineapples? Certainly. So the pineapple is the symbol of hospitality. And uh, long ago, the pineapple was the source that people would put outside their home to allow visitors that were traveling through the area to know that they were welcome to come into their home. Uh, my first pineapple was given to me by my aunt. It's a, um, a doorstop that I have. And never did I know as a young individual that it would have so much meaning in my life and the spirit of what I do. And so for me, um, we kind of have a hashtag pineapple passion. <laughs> I have a group yes. of friends that are also hospitality educators and um, certainly we share with one another where we got which pineapple and where to find something. Um, the, the picture with the blue background and the gold pineapples, believe it or not, was revealed as a secret in that um, image with Anthony. And it is actually um, my shower curtain <laughs> that I use as a backdrop um, in my former home. Um, so yes, there are pineapples in my house, in my camper, in my office, as a part of my jewelry, as a part of my attire. Uh, it's something that I thoroughly enjoy and they, they are, um, prickly on the outside and sweet on the inside. So now, now the pineapples are becoming the status symbol of a passionate hospitality individual. That's great to hear. <laughs> And one more question from my side, I, this, <laughs> <laughs> the duck story. So there are plenty of ducks, one having a scuba dive, chefs. So what is the secret behind this particular thing? So this is another great and fun story. And thank you for capturing this. It certainly was great to see it in the video as well. Um, when I was a general manager, I had been uh, cleaning hotel rooms, helping out my team. It was a regular part of what I did. And um, at the time, Virgin Atlantic Airways had provided these little tiny miniature ducks to the, their kid guests that would travel in a little um, bag. And many times our guests um, receive different items and to those individuals, it wasn't important. And as I was cleaning the room, normally you would potentially throw something like that away or leave it in lost and found. I was like, I can't just leave these little ducks in the trash and let them go. And so I put them in my pocket and eventually at the end of the day, as I would always do as a general manager, I'd empty out my pockets of what I had found and collected. And 99% of the time it was always trash. And so I put them on my bookshelf. And then I was out in my parking lot and I found a rubber duck and someone had rolled over it and had tire tracks on it. And then my girlfriend um, was running a hotel and she had a duck very similar to these that had a logo on it for the hotel name. And she had given it to me. And so each of those rubber ducks then end up sitting on my shelf. And from that point on, anyone that came into my office 
honestly thought I loved rubber ducks. The most <laughs> hysterical thing is I honestly don't like the color yellow. It is like the one thing that I really don't like. Um, but everyone kept bringing me ducks, finding ducks when they would travel. I get text messages from students when they're traveling. Look at what I found if it's like a whole store down in Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Unfortunately, I never had a chance to go there, but there's an entire store of rubber ducks. Um, actually, we're going to hold one moment. <laughs> Because this rubber duck um, in my new office is my first rubber duck from my new business partner, um, Alec Dalton. And this rubber duck um, is the Peabody Hotel Duck Master um, from the Peabody Hotel. And um, the rest of my ducks are still packed in storage, um, being shuffled along very slowly from Boston. Um, but if you've ever paid attention to um, the Peabody Hotel as a, a company, they have a duck master in each of their hotels and um, that duck master brings those ducks down from the roof into the lobby fountain. Um, and so this duck here makes duck number 171 in my collection. <laughs> That's lovely to hear. <laughs> That's a considerable number, <laughs> I must say. It is, it is. That's why I said they're taking their slow journey from Boston. <laughs> okay, so we just start off. So we start off with formally the Q&A session with you. Are you ready? I am. Okay, that's good to hear. <clears throat> so uh, the first question that comes to my mind is, what is the role of hospitality education in the development of the students? Well, um, I would say from uh, the fact that um, hospitality education, it provides, in my opinion, a superior focus level of a standard business education because we're providing all of those standard components that you would earn in a business degree, but we do it with passion and flair and even that pineapple passion that will come into be. And now more than ever, especially after the pandemic, you can feel some of the discontent and not just restaurants or hotels, but in normal businesses, in, even in your cable provider, or your cell phone provider's office, your medical doctor's office, that lack of enthusiasm or wanting to be there. That's what's missing, that customer service, that hospitality flair. And that's what we have a tendency to do so well within hospitality education and really teach you those additional niches. Another great example that comes into mind is um, a restaurant, uh, an individual that wants to own a restaurant. You may have your parents or your grandparents recipes and, and be able to cook them really well and be like, oh, great, I should open a restaurant and be able to do this. But one of the things, if you just have a business degree, you might not have learned in accounting is purchasing practices as well as food and beverage cost control. It's a really important aspect to looking at how successful that business is going to be. So many businesses, and I believe the latest statistic is roughly around 80% of businesses will fail within the first five years, is simply because they don't have that real strong hospitality knowledge that they need. Very true, very true. Okay, so according to you, what are the current issues that are being faced in hospitality education on the verge of yeah. educators, especially? Right, so um, I think there's there's a couple different ways to, to look at this. And, and the most important is um, our issue that every owner and every operator has on their mind right now, and that's going to be the labor crisis that we're currently experiencing. And here in the United States, I know it's a really big challenge and it creates this ripple effect. So we've had all of these closures due to COVID. 
Um, and with that, because of those closures, many individuals, and rightfully so, you need to earn your money to be able to work and provide for yourself and your family. And so with some of that unknown, some people can't handle that settlement and, and kind of hold out and wait and, and stand by with unemployment here in the United States, they left the hospitality industry and went into other industries that became um, more stable um, hours that were of, of operation and possibly even something that paid a little bit more. One of the other unique challenges is that our industry doesn't necessarily um, pay the highest wages. Um, and so you couple those components together with the fact that when we are working and we are in full level of operation, our industry is driven at a 24 hour, seven days a week type of operation. So unfortunately, that means you are going to have to work an overnight. Um, and that for many individuals is um, a detractor. You might not want to work that graveyard shift. If you think about a hotel, someone needs to be there to make sure that that asset is maintained and they can help the guests between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. It was actually one of my favorite shifts because I could always multitask. I could do the task that was needed, but I could do my other management efforts and roles um, and just really enjoy it. And not that I didn't like guests because I love being in front of guests, but sometimes it's if you have any um, interest in being somewhat of an introvert um, that downtime with not as many guests um, is still a good opportunity as well um, the other aspect is um, as i mentioned in terms of we don't necessarily pay that well um, it is an industry that it is coupled with experience so uh, entry into the industry you're not going to make a large amount of money but you're going to couple that with your experience and you may do a ladder component of growth or maybe lattice work where you take different positions and move your way up uh, to, to gain the experience and the skills that you need to advance and I worked real hard coming um, through my college days, right out of my college days. Um, and if I hadn't worked as hard as I did and um, put those hours in and learn those skills, when, when a new task came up, I asked, how could I help? How could I contribute? It then led me to be one of the first female general managers in the city of Boston under the age of 25. My goal was to do it at 25 and I did it when I was 24. I never would have done that had I not accepted every challenge and taken every um, small pay increase as it came and just know that my hard work would pay off later on. I think as my husband would probably say and many others, don't follow the dollar, follow the passion for the enjoyment of what you do. The dollars will come later. And so my passion has always been if I love what I do, it doesn't feel like it's work and I enjoy it and things come together down the road. That's very encouraging for the kids also to know that one can be a journal manager by the age of 24. That is really inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of hard work. You got to yeah, really definitely. put it you know, early in experience, but I can it understand. is possible. And, and there are others that will do it slightly thereafter, but um, I, I, my, my first full time college position, I had a senior and gosh, I still keep in touch with Ralph. Um, my my girlfriend who used to be my director of sales, her name happened to be Susanna as well. Uh, she called me and she goes, I think you have a problem. I said, what? She goes, this kid's going to graduate next semester and he thinks he's going to be a general manager. This is his first job. I'm like, OK, we're going to work through that one. Um, so that is a component of don't think just because you have the education, you have that superior level of knowledge than people in the industry. You don't yet. You need to tap in and leverage the knowledge of your peers, your supervisors, your managers, your mentors, and really learn from everyone. And that will make you in turn a better manager and an in turn leader down the road. OK, that's a really good. Uh words of wisdom from your end. Uh, my next question is basically you've been into teaching for the past 16 years now, apart from the hospitality and experience of uh, mammoth 25 years. So I'm just asking what are the new techniques that you are 
performing back in the US that can help globally also for the children to prosper in this particular environment making them managers and leaders of tomorrow great question and so i think uh the the first aspect you have to embrace is uh the technology that you have available to you at the time. Now, one of the unique challenges in the hospitality industry from my many years of being out in the field, and even now, hospitality as an industry is very slow to adapt to technology. Um, many of the owners are somewhat hesitant in spending all of this infused capital into purchasing things. I think if I were to move a little bit, there's an old door lock right behind me, um, right? And so door locks is a great example of technology where now we can have RFID and we can use our cell phones to be able to gain access to those doors. That technology has been around for at least 10 years, but we haven't quickly adapted to using that and spending the money in the hotels. And so from a student perspective, we are probably using our LMS, our learning management system. Embrace learning and using that. One of the advantages, I think, if you were to take a step back from the experience of COVID, we just propelled ourselves probably five to 10 years faster by the use of Microsoft Teams or Zoom or Google Meet or whatever other video platform that we've had to use to be able to provide education. I know it's not the same as being per se in person to learn, but look, I would not have the opportunity to join your school today if we didn't become more familiar and look differently at how can we leverage our friends from around the globe to be infused in a part of what our program and curriculum is. I will give you a tip to stay tuned. There will be some amazing opportunities that I will be creating here at Indian River State College that will be available globally with my friend Anthony Melchiori. We will be definitely waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next uh, question that comes is the benefits and challenges hospitality management students experience by working in conjunction with completing their studies. So what's your take on to this? Yeah, so this is another unique aspect. And I would say probably one of the, the few majors that students will typically be one strongly encouraged to have experience in. And in many instances, again, from that pay scale that we talked about, students are gonna need to have a job to help pay for their education. It's very few students have the luxury of being able to just simply go to school and focus on their studies. And so this is the then challenge of time management um, and working and communicating with your manager or your supervisor who's doing your schedule. And so sometimes the default challenge may be if you're good at your job and your supervisor relies on you, they forget sometimes that you're a student too. And so I like to, to recommend for any of my students that are doing an internship or working as well, that you have that open conversation with your supervisor and not to the point of frustration because you're being scheduled for too many hours, but say, you know, and this is why faculty members, they provide a syllabus in advance. You should have an entire semester worth of dates and assignments. Um, and if faculty, if you're not providing that information for your students with those deadlines, think again, how can you better prepare yourself for the semester so that you can better prepare your students so that they can know. Now students, my biggest recommendation is please read that syllabus. Please put those dates in your calendar because from the faculty standpoint, it's real frustrating when people are like, oh, I didn't know that was due. Now, the next aspect that comes into play is many times when you're doing something for the first time, you don't realize how long it's going to take you to do something. It could take you much longer. And so one of the things that I've learned in the course of my career is when I look at what something is and I kind of put into my head, oh, well, I think I can do this in X amount of time. Whatever that X amount of time is, do yourself a favor, double that. 
plan for that double amount of time. Hey, listen, if you get done earlier than that, if you get done prior to what you thought you were going to do, you just found some extra time in your schedule and maybe you can pick up a different project or maybe you can go out with your friends or do something. But when you leave things to the last minute and you don't plan properly, so my thought would be proper preparation prevents poor performance. Remember those five P's, proper preparation prevents poor performance then you'll you'll feel better you won't be as stressed your work quality will be better you'll have extra time to take a look at something revise it and you won't be caught trying to struggle to work at that same time because maybe somebody else calls out at work and your boss is like can you pick up that shift and you're like yeah i need that money and i want to do that but i have this assignment due so some strategies and skills for your time management and that's going to propel you much further where when you become a manager you can manage your time much better and be much more successful that way that's really great the five p's definitely every student should keep that particular thing into the mind so the next uh, question that comes is why are the leadership skills sought to be so important in hospitality especially when i talk about hospitality sector whether it is a hotel or a restaurant why do you think it is so important for an individual to possess those leadership skills and how this education framework that we are right now following whether it is trying to go in that particular direction or we are trying in the meantime we are deviating from that particular direction great question so from from a vantage point of leadership skills in in my opinion the way i view it, it those components start to serve as the foundation for the success of your business organization and so you need to have your business concept with a mission, which then serves as the creation for your culture that you're going to establish. That's going to lead up to an individual having that leadership team put into place and that leader who's going to help drive that mission, that vision, those values to create that culture. When that positive culture is then created in a business organization, it's going to allow your employees to thrive. They're going to feel inspired by the individual whom they work for, that leader. They're going to be motivated and excited to be able to drive the business organization to that next level. And so some institutions, some educational components um, in, in hospitality might focus a little bit more on management and operations. Um, others might be trying to take it to that next level. When possible in my classes, I like to give you a little bit of a split because in my opinion, from my experience, not every manager is a great leader and not every great leader is a great manager. Um, from that management perspective, I view it as not less per se than a leader, but a different skill set. Uh, time management, attention to detail, logistically oriented. So that leader, if you think about it, has this vision of where do we need to take our, our business based on that mission um, and being very forward thinking and um, really if you think of strategic visions a lot of times leaders are really great at saying okay where um, our next strategic vision is 2025 or 2030 so we can get to there and then those managers help that leader get to that part in driving all of that i've worked for people who as a leader had great inspiration were really motivating i felt charged up by being with them i wanted to help that leader see that vision happen but when it came down to the nuts and bolts, <laughs> they didn't know how to turn a nut um, on top of a bolt and make it strong um, because I had those skill sets in terms of the logistics to be that manager to help deliver upon that vision. So it's collectively, I firmly believe in a complete team approach that you've got to be able to leverage that together. As a general manager, what I always looked for was making sure that I knew what my own strengths and weaknesses were. And I hired people who had my weaknesses as their strength to build up that team. And that was a really important piece. Some people don't like to do that. They don't like to make hire someone that can do something better than them. I don't look at it that way because from that vantage point, 
I don't want to necessarily be in the same position for the rest of my life. I like to go in, look at what the challenge and the problem is, figure out what that solution is, put the team together, get everybody working, and then propel us to that next level. And from an education standpoint, if we can help develop some of those skill sets for increasing your attention to detail, one of the assignments I provide in lodging operations is I have my students do a manual night audit. It's really not their <laughs> fan favorite because it's papers and pencil and and writing. But man, I have them write a reflection at the end. At the end of that that assignment, they are reflective and thinking, "I didn't realize what it took to do this task or this job," and they they have more appreciation for it and. Um, in some instances, and this is okay in that learning aspect to say, I do not want to do this task. I do not want to do this job. So I need to hone in my skills and learn something a little bit different to find exactly what my niche is. And if you don't learn and try, you'll never know. It's almost like riding a bike when you did so with your parents. You had to learn and try and you probably fell off the bike. I just looked at a picture that came in my time hop from yesterday. Two years ago, my son was riding his bike and learning how to go down a hill and flipped over the handlebars. I did not see it because I probably would have lost my cookies, but he came back up and I remember seeing the pictures of like his whole face all cut up, but he is a phenomenal bike rider right now. And if he didn't have that sense of trying and failing and getting back up and trying again, you too won't get anywhere. You sometimes just stumble, but you've got to be able to get back up to be able to persevere. That's great. Uh, uh, my next, uh, am I audible? Okay. Yeah, okay. So my next uh, question is basically, I'm not being gender biased basically. I was just asking, are female managers good or not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a really- Everybody has question. a phobia on working with the female managers. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, interestingly enough, I think if you were to look at the top leadership of most companies on that C-suite or CFO or CEO level, there's actually not a tremendous amount of female leaders. Um, I had the distinct honor um, of earning a scholarship through the American Hotel Lodging Association, and it was under the tutelage of Nancy Johnson, who had been um, with a major company in that C-suite level. And it, it gave me such pleasure to find that inspiration to be at that level. And so this is where I strongly encourage hospitality education programs to really continue to work at trying to develop those female leaders. One of the things we did at my previous institution at Boston University is we had a leadership summit and it was focused on how can we develop those female leaders um, into uh, that world and, and trying to get them to that level. Um, in many instances, uh, maybe I'll come across as being a little bit biased, but when I worked for several of my female general managers as I was coming up, I felt that in many instances, they actually were better managers. They had a better sense of understanding and compassion and a little bit more nurturing. When I had um, a new family that was coming around and my stepchildren needed to be picked up and dropped off, my female general manager, man, she got that and she understood and she was willing to say, I understand you have a family obligation. Let's work together to figure out how we can adjust the schedule so we can support you and what you're looking to do. But Yet, obviously, we have to be able to keep our doors open because we're a hotel and 24-7. Um, and so from that vantage point, I think that anything um, as hospitality programs we can do to elevate students and help them with the skills. And from that vantage point, any of the men in our industry, be compassionate, be understanding, um, and then work to what can we do to help elevate those females in our industry so that they go forward. One of the unique challenges that we do see is that um, females have a tendency to take some time to raise their children. Um, and sometimes that puts them at a disadvantage of having to take make that decision to take time away from work. Um, but be those men in the lives of the women that can help make them successful. Listen, I wouldn't be here with you all right now at my 630 in the morning to get started 
if it wasn't for my husband being home with my son to make sure that they had something to do so that I could be here. Um, my former dean from Johnson & Wales, Caroline Cooper, um, that was one of the pieces of sage advice that she sat down and shared with my husband that in order for your wife, for me to be successful, you have to support her as well in the quest for what that is. And that was something that her husband, Paul, did. Such a sweet man for her to become dean of a hospitality college. So um, I think it goes hand in hand. And I think we all win out better when we work collaboratively together. And I think take a time and a moment to understand where people come from and be able to adapt well. That's really nice. And uh, one of my most encouraging question for the kids as well, and my favorite one, what do you enjoy the most in your job when you compare it from operations to academics? So that's a whole new well, world now. Yeah, you know, from the student perspective, you are really lucky I cannot fire you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would have to say when I when I started as an adjunct, that was something I had to learn because not that I went around and fired all of my employees. I don't want to get anyone misalluded there, but um, I could look at progressively disciplining you. And, you know, again, coach and counsel, I want you to be successful. Your failure by by being terminated is my failure because I haven't led you to that right path. If I've led you to that right path, then you're going to be successful. And so um, from that vantage point, my um, transition, if you will, being in operations, I was able to support and help just one team of people, however many employees I had at that one particular location. And that was great. And I and I led some great people on. It's fabulous to stay in contact with many of my former employees and managers and be remaining in a networked fashion of seeing how successful that they are. I love being able to see that, but I wanted to do more. I wanted to help more. And in order for me to do that and help more, I had to get into academia and I had to do so on a full time basis because now I have this opportunity to impart my wisdom, my knowledge and my experience on so many more individuals and support their learning and growth. Over the course of my 16 plus years in teaching, I have remained in contact with so many of my former students that will now either be guest speakers for me or just share in their journey of life, of, of where they are. Um, I just had one of my students who just had a baby this past summer. Well, she took advantage of the fact that I was moving and I had so many things I had to get rid of from when my son, I drove her carloads of stuff um, to help support Lindsay and, and the growth of their baby. I've um, got another one that she's finally, after I think this is the third attempt from COVID getting married, unfortunately, I won't be able to make it to Melina's wedding because I'm down here in Florida and I can't get back up to Connecticut. But I love being a part of the lives and the fabric of seeing how my students have advanced in life and continue to drive our industry and that level of passion that brings me the greatest level of joy to see people successful thank you so much uh, suzanne there is a lot more to speak but uh, due to the time constraints and i know your busy schedule <laughs> so if somebody has a question around from the audience i will definitely mail it to you <laughs> so sure right now there won't be much of a <laughs> talk so it was a really uh, eye-opener session for the younger DDAs. Listening to your experiences, I would like to call upon Professor Dr. Ravikesh Srivastava. He is the Pro Vice Chancellor of the IMS Unison University to say a few words. Over to you, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. So good morning, Dr. Suzanne. Good morning. Nice to hear you and listen to you. And it was a really wonderful 
and I could not realize that whether I am listening to the hospitality expert or the management expert. <laughs> Though I am the from the field of the management, but really I have learned a lot from your question answer and the beautifully uh, beautifully you have answered many questions, which has a real concern about the hospitality sectors and particularly for the young faculty and the students who are coming for these sectors. Uh, some of the point you have raised uh, are really, uh, I think the faculty as well as the students should consider sincerely on these points, why technology adoption is very, very low, particularly in the hospitality sectors where you can see the lot of the intellectuals, rich people are visiting to you. Mm -hmm. How you can impress with the high end of technology and the hospitality sector should not hesitate and they should come forward and it is not a big deal if they really want to learn and would like to apply. I think it's very, very easy and one can go ahead. Many sectors are transforming very fast, particularly with this COVID and pandemic. Now it is a compulsions particularly not in the hospitality sector, but all the sectors should uh, go through the technology use hand to hand. And technology will be possible when the top to bottom, they are going to practice it. It is not like that the compartment, if you are just giving in some particular department, no. I think it should be handy to all the stakeholder as well as the all the employee in the hospitality sectors only then it is a possible and it will be purposely used uh, something i really impressed the way you told that the, this particular sector hospitality sectors where it is not necessary the person should come only with the knowledge from the different institution but along with the knowledge they should have the good passion flair and skill a skill, of course, will come with the experience. Mm -hmm. And once you have spent some good amount of time in with your passion, so definitely you are developing your skill. But most important, your passion. In fact, I will say that you should immerse with the assignment. You should immerse with the your dream. dream. Only then you can make a difference, In particularly in these hospitality sectors. And rightly, you have spoken that you just follow your passion. You just follow your dream. Dollar will follow you. Not necessarily you should follow the dollar. And definitely with this words, I'm really happy to uh, know about that. The any sector, not only this sectors, you have to be very clear in your mind that it has to be business management. If business is going on, then definitely everyone is growing. If business is not going, then definitely you have to think again and again, what is your contribution? So ultimately it's a business management, any sectors, and that should be the top of mind for each stakeholder, whether you are a manager, whether you are a leader. And the way you have differentiated the manager and leader, it is really wonderful. And leader cannot be manager and manager. Every manager cannot be the leader. But leader, leader, the way visualize, they can foresee the future. They can read the line between the line. And the manager, good manager, can read the mind of the leaders and can grab what is going on the mind of our leader. That is the path you can follow to become the future leader. So this is the combinations one should have. And very few people like you would like to have team members where you have a weaknesses. But I really impress this is the right combination of the team. And if you work as a complementary to each other, what strength you have and what the strength he has, based on that, you can work as a team. That is the right blend of the team. If you are working only with the everyone having the same strength or everyone having the same weaknesses, then there will be dispute. Then there will be conflict. 
So it's better to develop a complementary team. Then only you can take the organization to the next level. So with this, I'm really very, very thankful to you, Dr. Suzanne. Uh, you have spared your valuable time and I'm sure that the most of our faculty member as well as the students have been benefited with your vast experience in this sectors. And anyone can see the way you are passionate with the hospitality sectors. And with this, I'm very thankful to our School of Hospitality Management, our Dean, Dr. Vinerana and his team, uh, Sumit and others faculty member, the way they are very much engaged. Suzanne, this is a new school just started three, four years back. But uh, I'm really proud to say that we have a wonderful team. And I'm sure that this particularly school in this university is going to make a difference in coming years, not only in the national level, but the global level. So with all my best wishes to everyone, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, sir. Your words means a lot to all of us. And now I would like to invite Professor Dr. Vinay Irana, the Dean of the School of Hospitality Management to deliver the officially vote of thanks to Suzanne. Uh, good morning, Dr. Suzanne. <laughs> Hi. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it would be somewhere around 6.30 or 7 a.m. at Florida. Yes, that is right. <laughs> okay. I think that is the hallmark of a true professional that I think you have extended beyond your duty hours to be present for this presentation. So you deserve a huge round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I believe, I think uh, it all started on a very humble note. I dropped in a message to you and you reverted back. And that is the beauty of this uh, digital era that we are living in. I think uh, this whole world is a global place. I think distances, geographies now do not matter. And uh, we can connect, we can exchange ideas. And that is the very, very uh, uh, essence of hosting this session. Now, Dr. Suzanne, your initiative to address this uh, impressionable young students, it goes a very, very long way. And we believe that it will give them a food for thought about uh, the various issues or various educational uh, uh, issues about the hotel industry. Uh, as the pro Vaishnavas has already put in, we are a very, uh, we are a fairly new school on the campus. We are hardly three and a half years old. And the reason we started the series of rendezvous, we, uh, just to apprise you, we started this uh, series of rendezvous last September, September 2020. Uh, the, the very idea was to first digitally embrace the learning. Then of course, along with it, let's have the global insights about the hospitality issues. What do our industry partners, our academia partners have to say about this facing the pandemic challenges? And I think uh, this uh, rendezvous has grown over the, I think, 10th chapter. And uh, today we have a wonderful uh, resource person who has a uh, what do you call a balance of person from the academia and from the industry. So for a person like you, students have a lot to take away. Uh, it's my religious duty to just to sum up the takeaway for this session. While, uh, while Sumit and you were having the conversation, I was trying to note down certain key takeaway points as a learning of this session, and I would like to summarize it for all our students. I think uh, a very important, the pineapple, the symbol of international hospitality, and Dr. Suzanne has already embraced this uh, symbol. <laughs> and this is something, an uh, impression that you create on the young mind. You see, you have to embrace it wholeheartedly, and uh, your way of adapting this symbol of pineapple will definitely also put an impression on them. And of course, the very interesting duck tales, I would say. The, the lesson out of it is, preventing the wastage, putting to wastage to the uh, uh, reusing uh, whatever you can, which is what most of us should be sensitized about being the impressionable young managers. Then of course, uh, the role of hospitality manage uh, management, uh, the passion and flair is something that you had uh, really marked upon. Anything Anybody who has to work in hotel industry has to be passionate about the trade. 
Then of course, uh, there are certain current issues in the higher education. I think you have rightly pointed out that there is exodus of good hospitality personnel from the industry and especially during this uh, COVID era. Uh, the challenges are the remuneration. I think this is the universal challenge. The work-life balance, I think that is, that is the main affliction in our industry. But then, of course, along with the challenges, there are there are uh, suitable avenues for tremendous growth. Now, somebody who accepts the challenges and who does not follow the dollar but follows the passion is the person bound to succeed. I think this is the learning for today. And of course, uh, one should know how to leverage the knowledge and wisdom from others. I think one this this one is something that we have applied today on you. <laughs> okay, the. Adoption of technology in education, especially the hospitality education and the hospitality operations. Now, I think uh, uh, historically the industry has been slightly hesitant about adopting the uh, technology or integrating the technology into their operations. But then I think this pandemic has taught us that uh, adopting the technology will go a very, very long way in uh, building up uh, speed, efficiency and productivity in our operations. So that is something the hotel promoters need to need to look into. And of course, the current issues, uh, how hospitality student can develop certain competencies. I think very, very important thing rightly pointed out by you is the time management. So the strategy of time management is the core essence of being successful. And of course, your uh, wonderful uh, phrase, five P's. I think uh, prepare uh, proper pre proper preparation prevents poor performance. I think this is something even I will now imbibe by, and this is something I will always uh, share with my students. And of course, what could be or what should be the leadership skills? I think a leader should be able to carry on the mission, vision, and the value of the organization, translate it to the uh, to downline uh, line staff, and of course, he should be able to, he or she should be able to put together the team and have the sense of perseverance. This is something that is very important that we have learned out of this conversation. And this is especially for our uh, girl students, the female leadership role in hospitality. And there is no denying the fact that uh, women managers are most suited because they all they intrinsically, they already have these uh, qualities of being compassionate, nurturing, understanding, and which is actually the tenet of running the hospitality business. So they seems to be they seem to be more effective than the male counterpart, and of course I think student experiences will also add on to the value to their uh, uh, education. Uh, Dr. Suzanne, thank you so much. I think uh, we had a very brief session. I think uh, through this brief session we have been able to condense down certain points, and which definitely most of our students who are hearing this session, who are participating in this session, they will also have certain inclination about this industry. Since I've been asked to uh, place the vote of thanks, uh, I would definitely like to mention Mr. Sumit. I think he had been the instrumental person in uh, weaving in the resource person, building up this concept about the uh, rendezvous. And uh, at the back end, uh, Mr. Sashi Khan, my uh, another colleague had been helping out to organize this session. So there are certain back end workers for uh, this session, and I think I pass on the a uh, huge round of uh, appreciation to them. And at the same time, I would like to thank all the participants. Today I see uh, people from different institutes all across the India. They are participating in this session. And I th this is, uh, this, is uh, this I believe uh, gives us a firm belief that uh, people are always willing to learn uh, given the opportunity. And uh, last but not the least, uh, Dr. Suzanne, if time and opportunity permits, we will definitely would like to host you in campus in India uh, let's see how soon it would be possible, but then uh, we will be definitely staying in touch with you for more productive activities in the coming future. Thank you so much once again. My I sincere pleasure. I wish everyone a fantastic evening <laughs> and thank you for your inclusion in today's session. Hopefully you've taken some spark of my passion and you will carry it forward. Passion is infectious. <laughs> Let this infection spread more than the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Thank you. Over to you, Sumit. Thank you so much, sir, for your words of wisdom. And now I will be inviting 
the key person behind this whole event to be successful uh, mr shashikant assistant professor in the school of hospitality management ms unison university over thank to you, you shashi sir thank you sir greetings everyone the link for the certificate uh, is already active now it's there into the chat box so you can assess it so it will be active for next 15 minutes okay. dr susan welcome and thank you over to you sumit pratap sir again thank you so much shashi sir without you this event would have not been a possible for me to be regulated in such a smooth manner and of course tons of thanks to you dr susan it was a nice very your pleasure and it's been great to work with you very well organized and you did a phenomenal job so thank you samet it's been a pleasure working with you thank you so much have a pleasant morning once again all right thanks everyone take care thank you thank you thank you susan thank you uh, sumit sir just to excuse you just yes, sir. excuse me yeah please uh, do not uh, end the meeting the students or uh, maybe the participants might be assessing the form okay. sure sir sure sir thank you thank you susan thanks for your time okay. take bye -bye. care have a great day thank you bye bye thank you and uh, once again i would like to thank all the participants who have been uh, playing a pivotal role to make this particular rendezvous a success for all of us i hope you must have gained some knowledge out of it so the link has already been shared into the chat box for the feedback form so very soon we will be meeting you all with another informative and knowledgeable session thank you so much all of you for your presence over here Uh, Sumit, uh, you may uh, just allow a couple of the participants to fill up the uh, the feedback form so that they can attain the certificate. Sir, so keep sure, the, sir. Uh, keep this running, and after five five seven minutes, we can then close the session. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Sir.